All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try to make this our last screencast for Unit 2. We're going to talk all about those specialized proteins called enzymes. Let's talk about some facts in regard to these enzymes first. Enzymes are just proteins that speed up chemical reactions. That's the definition of a catalyst, and that's what they are. <clears throat> enzymes do not cause the actual reaction, chemical reaction, to happen. The chemical reaction would happen whether the enzyme was around or not. The enzyme lowers the amount of energy needed for the reaction to take place. That's how an enzyme speeds up these chemical reactions, by lowering the energy required. And we call that energy required activation energy. So enzymes catalyze chemical reactions by lowering activation energy. Without enzymes, the processes that happen in your cell, these chemical reactions, they would happen so slowly that, well, data indicates there'd be no such thing as life. These reactions that are necessary for life, like digestion, like metabolism, they need to happen at a certain rate for us to stay alive and for life to begin in the first place. And enzymes reduce the activation energy of these reactions so that they can happen. At, a appropriate, at an appropriate pace that allows life to occur. Enzymes are specific, all right? They only carry out one job, but they do that job very well, and that job is catalyzing chemical reactions, speeding them up. Enzymes are also reusable, which is important to remember. An enzyme can speed up a reaction, that reaction can happen, and then that same enzyme can go speed up another or a similar or the same chemical reaction again. Over and over and over. Okay, this is going to be very important here, folks. Here is how an enzyme works. First off, the purple, the purple kind of half circle, that's our enzyme. All right, That's what we're going to make our protein look like in this example. Remember, enzymes are just special proteins. So, here's what happens. You have the enzyme, which is our purple guy. Then we have these things called substrates, which are these two little chemicals floating around, waiting to meet the enzyme. So put these two together, and then we get this enzyme-substrate complex. And then notice, as we follow the arrow here, our red and green chemicals have turned into yellow and blue. And they are released from the enzyme. The color change and the shape change here only indicates to us that this enzyme caused the chemical reaction to occur, turning reactants into the products, and then they were released. Let's go through this again. Here's our enzyme. Here are our substrate molecules, our chemicals that are going to undergo a chemical reaction whether the enzyme is present or not. Then the enzyme binds these substrates, brings them in to itself into this little outcove here. We can see that happening right here. And this is the enzyme substrate complex. And then while these substrate molecules are in the enzyme, they're going to be converted. The activation energy for them to react with each other is going to be lowered by the enzyme and they're going to be able to carry out their chemical reaction much, much faster and turn into these different products from what they, from what they began. And notice that the enzyme is relatively unchanged and can be used again. That's what this arrow here indicates. It goes right back to its old self and can do the same thing all over again. <clears throat> so substrate molecules are the reactants in the chemical reaction, the beginning uh, material needed for the chemical reaction. Products, which we see here, products are the new substances formed by the chemical reaction. That again, that chemical reaction was already going to happen in the first place, but the enzyme lowers the energy needed. The activation energy gets lowered. So therefore, the chemical reaction can happen faster. Now this site, this little outcove here on the enzyme where the substrate molecules eventually bind to and where the product molecules are eventually released from is called the active site. This is the only place where these molecules are going to have a chemical interaction with themselves, between themselves, and with the enzyme. So again, 
the active site. It is where the substrate molecules bind to the enzyme, and it's very precise. Okay, it's almost like a lock and key. Um, that's how we used to think of it, and that's good for our learning purposes right now to think of it like the substrate is the key and the active site on the enzyme is the lock, and they fit together that way. Uh, but research and data now indicates that it's more of like the active site kind of molds to the substrate molecules just a little bit, meaning that enzymes, the same enzyme, can catalyze multiple different reactions. Okay. So let's remember a little bit about enzymes. But before we do, I'm going to exit the presentation, actually. I'm going to take you over here, and I'm going to show you this graph. Okay, This is how we explain activation energy. So notice, here's the reaction progress. right? So this would be time. Time down here is reaction progress, how long the reaction takes to happen. Then here's our energy level on the y-axis. Our purple line goes up and then comes down and we have our products being made on our purple line but notice what the purple line represents the purple line represents activation energy of an uncatalyzed reaction so that's the activation energy if there was no enzyme all right this is how long it would take right look how long it takes for the products to be made okay now notice the drastic drop off the drastic drop off here of energy required when the reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme. All right, activation energy of catalyzed reaction. So an enzyme is here for the green line, and we drop the activation energy needed for this reaction by almost half, and that speeds up the production of the products. All right, so this is called an activation energy graph. And all you can see is the difference between energy needed for the reaction when the enzyme isn't present in the purple and is present in the green. All right, folks, and that's all she wrote for Unit 2. See you guys in Unit 3.